Um, what's gonna be the next feature that we implement for our language? Uh, well, uh, one of the interesting features that uh, we will need um, for self-hosting is an ability to access command line arguments, right? Because um, compiler has one input, right? It's the uh, the file, the source code, and the second input of the compiler is all of the command line arguments that you can give it, right? In fact, uh, if we take a look at the command line arguments of our language, right? So there's like a usage function, uh, right? So this is going to be def usage. Uh, so we have a lot of stuff and all of that is provided via the command line arguments. Uh, what's interesting is that uh, we already discussed that in the past, uh, we already have uh, a support for command line arguments by accident, completely by accident. So I'm going to demonstrate that one more time. Um, so uh, let me do the following thing. Uh, full port, right. So uh, what you can do in language, you can push some numbers onto the stack and then you can uh, drop those numbers from the stack. So this is a completely useless program. It pushes two numbers on the stack and it just drops them, right? And it will literally print nothing. If I try to simulate this program, right? So this is going to be full port. Um, it printed nothing. If I try to compile it and run it, it will also do nothing. Uh, but if you try to drop uh, something uh, that is not on the stack, so the stack is empty and you you try to drop something from there if you do that in the simulation uh, right if you do that in the simulation you will get a stack underflow and python runtime will uh, basically throw an exception uh, but what's interesting is that if you compile it right the port is unsafe language by the way so you can do a lot of nasty stuff in it it will not fail but it will actually uh, print something well instead of drop you have to do print print is like drop but on top of dropping thing it also prints what it dropped so let's take a look at what's going to happen uh right it will print one right it will print one uh and if you try to print one more time if you try to drop another frame uh it will also print a very big number it will also print a very big number if you provide more arguments for the program right it the first number will increase so and this is because uh this is because uh we use the actual like x86 64 stack we actually use the call stack as the stack for our program and here's an interesting thing about linux and x86 64 the command line arguments the argc and argv are passed by the stack so what we're observing in here, we're observing uh, argc and argv. So technically, uh, we already have a support for command line arguments, but it's undefined behavior. That's the problem with this thing. It's an undefined behavior. So what I was thinking is that let's actually go ahead and take this undefined behavior and make it defined. How about that? Does it sound cool? So, but to make it defined, uh, we need to add support for this kind of thing for the simulation mode, right? So, um, right, so we want to be able to have that in the simulation mode as well. Uh, and only after that, it will become a defined behavior. So this is how we turn bugs into features. Hmm? That's pretty cool. Right, so we found the bug, but it turned out to be a feature. So yeah, that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. All right, but the first thing I want to do, actually, uh, I want to write a program that iterates through command line arguments, right? And just prints all of them, right? <clears throat> uh, is that portable, though? A por portable across what? Um, right now, we support Linux and X on x86-64. So right now, the compiler supports uh, only one platform. Uh, and I would say that this is portable across all of the supported platforms. So, yeah. So it's just like you support one platform and it's portable uh, across all the supported platforms. That easy. Okay. So uh, we're going to do something like argv and port, right? So let's actually write um, a simple program uh, that basically iterates through all of the arguments and just prints them. Uh, this could be a problem, I think. I think this could be a problem because the argv are null terminated. So, and we have no way to print null terminated strings, unfortunately. 
Uh, to 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 uh, so I'm not even sure. So is there any easy way for us to do that? Uh, maybe we can have a macro um, that calculates the size of the null terminated string. Yeah, let's create a macro that uh, calculates the size of null, null terminated string. Mm -mm. So uh, std.worth. Um, Okay, so this is going to be a macro std len, right? And uh, here, uh, the input of this macro is going to be the pointer, right? Mm, this is going to be the pointer, and uh, we're going to have uh, a counter in here. So we push zero, and there we go. Uh, so maybe, 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 uh, I'm going to do actually swap. Right, so that means the counter is going to be somewhere here, uh, and we're going to have a loop while dupe, uh, and then we're going to read the byte. Right, so reading is actually uh, a comma. Right, we read the byte, uh, right, and we compare it with uh, zero. Right, while this entire thing is not zero, we're going to keep iterating. Right, we're going to keep iterating. So, and what we have in here is essentially a pointer, and I suppose we need to increment the pointer. So we need to swap, um, actually we need to do one plus, so that will increment this entire thing. Uh, one plus, then we need to swap, uh, which will give us this thing. And then we have to do one plus one more time, and then swap one more time. There we go. So uh, that's pretty much it, uh, I think. So after that, uh, we just need to drop the pointer, right? We just need to drop this pointer. And that way we essentially transformed, uh, we essentially transformed the pointer to the string to the size of the string. Not bad, I gotta say, uh, not bad. It's not a std len, it's actually str len. So let's actually test this entire thing. So if we have a hello uh, world, and uh, we also put uh, like a zero in here. Uh, here's an interesting thing. Uh, string literal puts, um, I think it puts the size of the string and the pointer. So if I do str len, uh, I'm gonna have, yeah, so if I print it two times, uh, first thing is going to be the calculated length, and the second thing is going to be the length of the whole thing, including the zero. Yes, including the zero. So the first length is going to be uh, this one, and it's uh, 12 characters, and the second one is going to be 13 characters. So this is what I, what I would expect in here. So if I do port uh, simulate uh, argv, uh, there we go, there we go. So this is precisely what I said. The first one is going to be 12 and the second one is going to be 13. So we have a macro for calculating the length of the null terminated strings now. Isn't that cool? Uh, so it's actually so cool that I think I'm going to add this macro to the standard library, right? So this is how we develop a standard library, right? Every time we need something, we just implement that. And uh, if it sounds uh, useful enough, we're going to add it to the standard library. So we already have a, a couple of things in here and also syscalls and stuff like that. And the standard library is only growing. It is only growing. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, two, 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 two. Uh, two, 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 two. so arg v. Uh, now, <clears throat> so the first thing on the stack uh, is arg v, right? So we know that for a fact. Uh, the second thing, and arg c, I'm sorry, arg c. The second thing is arg v, right? And uh, we need to turn that into. Uh, into something useful. Mm. Uh, so did we F? Uh, I didn't see any F edge to be fair. Everything seems to be okay. Okay, so let's do the following thing. Uh, duplicate like while dupe uh, uh, greater than zero, right? A while arc C is greater than zero, uh, we're gonna do this thing. And how are we gonna be doing all of that? Well, I think we need to swap this entire thing, 
right? And just extract the next stuff from it, and I suppose we'll have to swap it back, but uh, we'll see. Uh, okay, so we've swapped this. Mm, then I need to... I suppose I need to duplicate this RPB, right? I want to duplicate it. And after that, I want to dereference it. Um, so it points at another pointer. That means I need to dereference it as a 64-bit number. Right, there we go. So I got that. Uh, so after that, I need to compute the length of this entire thing. Right, uh, so that means I'll need to duplicate it. Right, I need to duplicate it and do str len. And that will give me this thing. So, and I want to feed this entire stuff into... Um, uh, Coma 64, yeah, Coma 64 was actually recently introduced by, uh, I forgot their nickname, just a second. So, uh, people are actively contributing to, uh, to the compiler. Uh, Intrinsics followed and store 64, um, so they were implemented by ZRTHXN, I hope I pronounced uh, their nickname correctly, so yeah. Uh, so we implemented those things, um, as essentially as macros, uh, and now they are intrinsics, the internal intrinsics, so they should work correctly. Mm, okay, so we have Esterlin. Uh, after that, I want to swap this entire thing, right? And this stuff already becomes uh, feedable into um, into write C scroll, right? So now I can do something std out and write, and it will basically put it, uh, you know, print it in, in the standard output. So uh, unfortunately, it doesn't uh, print the new line, so we'll have to print the new line ourselves, right? So we'll have to do something like that. So after that, I, I need to increment this counter, right? So we'll probably have to do something like, like this. Uh, so one plus, so that increments this thing. Um, Mm, 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 mm. One plus only makes sense for the um, for the C where we have a proper pointer arithmetics. Uh, I'm, my brain still thinks in C, right? In C, if you do plus one, it will increment it by eight bytes, right? But in here, you have to increment it by like directly by eight bytes. Uh, so um, now. Uh, after that, I'm going to swap this entire thing, uh, right, I'm going to swap this entire thing, and I'll have to decrement the amount of arguments by one. Uh, and there we go, we finished a single iteration of the, of the loop. Oh, Camel, subscribed with tier one, thank you, thank you so much for uh, tier one subscription, your first subscription, by the way, and welcome to our epic, uh, not a Camel Club, but Porth Club. Uh, so we have our own programming language. Uh, all right, so this program theoretically should um, basically print all of the command line arguments, right? That's what it should do. It should print all of the command line arguments uh, and also separate them with uh, new lines. <clears throat> uh, all righty, so let's see if it's even compilable. So I'm going to just try to compile it and everything's compiling and let's just go ahead and uh, run it and it's segfaulted. Isn't that cool? Isn't that epic? I think it's pretty cool. I really like that. So if I provide uh, additional arguments, it, uh, yeah, it doesn't work at all. It doesn't work at all. Uh, yeah, new, okay, so people in the chat already noticed. So the problem here is that I didn't provide like a std out to the right. So this could be prevented by uh, like a very simple static uh, checking. And a static checking would be if you consumed all of the arguments and you didn't underflow or overflow, all of that could be checked at compile time because the amount of inputs and outputs of all of these things are known at compile time. If we had such... Uh, check uh, I think it would have caught it um, so but we're gonna implement that after we finish the command line arguments okay so um, let's recompile the entire thing and uh, do, 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 and it still sick false God fucking damn it uh, all right so let's actually try to understand what the hell is going on so uh, arg c arg v right so this is what we have uh, I want to just go through this entire thing one more time. So I swap this stuff, right? I swap this stuff. I duplicate argv, 
uh, duplicate argv and then I read 8 bytes by argv. Effectively, I'm dereferencing it, right? So I'm just dereferencing this entire thing. Uh, after that, I'm duplicating it, right? I'm duplicating it, and uh, then I'm doing uh, strlen, right? So this is strlen. Um, so after that, I just need to swap uh, this entire stuff, uh, right? Uh, swap this entire stuff, and uh, I should just do std out right, right? Because it has the uh, the count and this entire thing, right? So that should be fine. And then we print the new line. Then we increment this thing by eight, right? So we increment this thing by eight. Uh, then we swap it, right? Then we swap it, uh, and then we decrement arc c by one. Uh, to to the two or C by one. So this is rather strange. Um, this is rather strange. Ah, I think I'm an idiot. I keep forgetting that write returns the uh, the code, right? Again, all of that could have been caught by uh, simple static checking, right? That we dropped and checked all of the R. Oh my God. Okay, so that should work now. Uh, okay, so now if I try to do that, still sick falls. God damn it. Uh, da 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 da. So maybe there is a problem with the uh, the strlen macro. Um, don't think so. I think it's fine. Uh, does it at least simulate? No, that's the point. Uh, that's kind of the point. It does not simulate. Uh, maybe there is a problem with the i6, like, 64 thing? Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. All right, so if I do something like exit in here and uh, I want to do print, and uh, print twice, right? So this is what we're gonna have in here. Uh, and also I wanna uh, just basically print this entire thing. So the first thing at the top is arc C and then the arc V. Okay, uh, so uh, then uh, if I drop this entire stuff, right? And then I do uh, U64 uh, and uh, I'm gonna print this thing. Uh, this, does it look like a pointer? Let's actually uh, take a look. Uh, is that a correct pointer if I do a hex? Um, so maybe it is a more or less correct pointer, okay? So, and after that, if I do uh, this, um, right, um, hmm. All right, it exited abnormally. Uh, I should have not printed it. Okay, so I should have printed it in here. Okay, and uh, all right, it couldn't print from there. So we like this thing did not dereference it properly. Is that a bug within this instruction? So that's the question. Is that a bug within this instruction? Okay, let's actually find out. Maybe it is a bug within this instruction. Who contributed this instruction? So it's an intrinsic load 64, right? Uh, load 64, and let's, let's take a look at this thing. So we pop the uh, address, okay, we pop the address, then uh, we clean this up, and then we read this entire thing from uh, this address into RBX, and that should be fine. So I don't see any problems in here. It's actually correct. Um, so yeah, so be fine. So be fine. No problem at all. Hmm. But yeah, this is a this is a huge problem, right? Because I dereference it once, and I cannot dereference it the second time. Uh, right, I will dereference it the second time. 
So it exited abnormally. So it's probably sick faulted, right? It's straight up sick faulted. Mm. I remember seeing 32 beat flag. Um. Mm. Mm. Okay, whatever. Uh, to to do two, because arg v is this right? So by doing dereferencing that, you get another pointer, and then you dereference one more time, you will get something. Uh, to to the two. To be fair, I don't really know. So maybe I wanna. Hmm. <sighs> Think the time has come to make a small break, chat. Yeah, because I'm getting really tired and my uh, brain doesn't really work. So let's make a small break, and after the break, we're gonna, um, you know. We're gonna investigate what's the problem. So, um, all right. So uh, let's actually make a very small uh, reproducible example, right? Um, so maybe I'm gonna straight up uh, actually get rid of uh, all of this, right? and um, let me let me see. So the simplest one is gonna be to drop arg c, then dereference arg v. Mm, once and then dereference uh, the first character of this thing and try to print it right so this this is the simple reproducible example that is supposed to work but it doesn't right so um and i don't really understand what's the problem so if i try to compile this entire thing it exits abnormally and it's uh, straight up a sec fault right so this is a segmentation fault and uh, i think one thing we can do in here is we can try to debug that with gdb uh, I don't think we have much choice in here, so I'm gonna go to this folder. Excuse me, and I'm gonna do GDB on our game, um, and let's just see what's gonna happen. Um, so we're gonna break on start and uh, run this entire thing, and I think I'm gonna do layout asm just to see what's going on in here. Uh, we can also also take a look at the um, at this thing. All right, so we do pop racks. Um, then we pop racks one more time, uh, then we're reading from this entire thing, uh, and push or BX, like, it should work. I'm just looking at this entire thing, it should just work, so I don't see any problems in here. Um, so let's do layout uh, registers, right, and uh, let's pop racks. So racks contains one, that makes sense. Um, so the next one is going to be uh, a pointer. And we can take a look at the pointer, right, so if I uh, turn it into character pointer pointer, and uh, I'll try to print it, uh, maybe even dereference it, and you can't just dereference it anymore. So you cannot access uh, the the memory in here, which the, which is really weird. Hmm. You really can't do that, can you? Hmm. Is that something that I'm missing in the runtime in here? Mm. Hmm. So if I um if I do something like this wait. So if I just um it's not a pointer to pointer. That is really interesting. So it's not the same as in C. I was actually confused. So that means they are just located on the stack as as the point. Oh my God, that makes even more sense now. 
I see what's going on here. So I see the reason why it is a pointer to pointer in um, in C because all right. So I, I think all right. At least I learned something. Right. At least I learned something. Which actually makes this entire thing even simpler to implement if I understand it correctly. So on a stack, uh, right? On a stack we have uh, arg c, then we have arg uh, v zero, which is the pointer to some string, uh, then arg uh, v one Zulu and so on and so forth. And in C, it is pointer to pointer because it just points at this array in the stack. That's why argv, uh, argv is a pointer to pointer. That makes sense, but for some reason I thought that this pointer to pointer is located somewhere here. Oh my god. Um, all right, I guess at least I learned something. At least I learned something. Uh, I'm not really that much of a low level guy so um yeah sometimes i just don't know things like this uh right so essentially um i can do this right away right i can do this right away so that means if i drop the arc c then i do str len um actually i can duplicate this thing then do str len then swap it then do std out write. Uh, I should be able to write the first string, uh, the, the, the program, the actual program. So let's go ahead and do that. And there we go. So here's the actual program. So yeah, that makes it even easier to implement. All right, so this entire shit actually overcomplicates this stuff. Um, okay, so let's go back to a drawing board. Um, <clears throat> Uh, so that means here we have arg v um, zero, then we have arg v one Zulu and so on and so forth. Right? It's that simple, actually. Uh, so and this one is interesting. Okay, so by doing swap, right? By doing swap, I have something like this. Then I duplicate this thing, right? Then I duplicate it. And uh, I don't need to dereference anything. Um, I don't need to dereference. I just need to do strlen. So this is going to be strlen. Uh, then I swap everything back, right? Like so. Uh, and then I do std out uh, write and drop. And that, that actually works absolutely beautifully. That works absolutely beautifully, and I don't have to do this thing. I don't have to do this thing. The only thing I have to do, I just have to subtract this. Oh my god, this is actually beautiful. That makes it so much fucking simpler. Mm, that makes it so much fucking simpler. Um, okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Linux developers? I, I don't know who actually did that. So, and uh, if we provide full bar buzz, uh, there we go. So here are all of the arguments that were provided in there. That's pretty cool. So the only reason why I couldn't do that is because I misunderstood what's on the stack, right? So it's actually super simple. I like that. Okay. You probably even can drop arc C because there will be null after the last argument. Let's give it a try. I suppose. Uh, so let's drop arc C. So it means here we have arg v uh, zero, right? So we duplicate, we check if it's zero. So that means here I don't have to swap anything. I only have to dupe this entire thing, then strlen and um, swap it back, uh, right? Just swap it back uh, and then print it. Uh, drop the entire thing and I don't even need to do that then so that's what it actually allows me to do right so it allows me to not do minus one for the arc C uh, that's pretty cool uh, so let's go ahead and do that and it works thank you thank you so much really really appreciate that so that makes it even simpler that makes it even simpler so this is the simple uh, use case <clears throat> Um, which we can put into the um, 
into the test cases. Uh, or we have a, like a test folder and this is where we're gonna put that. Uh, but here's the interesting thing. All of that works only in compilation mode. If I try to do something like this, uh, it will just underflow because in simulation, we don't take that into account because this is not a defined behavior. Um, so how can we make a defined behavior? This is a very interesting question. Um, I suppose when we simulate and we have to take the command line arguments from the port and just put them somewhere in the memory, I suppose. Um, let's go ahead and do that. So, uh, port dot py. So, uh, port dot py. Uh, simulation. Uh, simulation. Simulation. Uh, simulate. Cannot find. So what I'm thinking is that uh, we can take argv as a list of strings in here. Right, there we go. Uh, and we need to push all of that into the memory. Right, we need to push all of that into the memory. Uh, so we already have a buffer where we keep all of the strings for the simulation. And what I'm thinking is uh, we can put all of these argv things into that buffer as well. I think that's going to be pretty cool. And then uh, we can push the pointers, the addresses of um, uh, of those strings into, into the stack. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea, actually. Um, so they're going to be in... A, in which order are they going to be? They have to be in a reversed order, though. Um, they have to be in a reversed order. So though um, there is a problem in here is that to push a new string into the memory, uh, you would have to do this kind of stuff. So you have to add it to the string of sets. Uh, right, so you add it to the string of sets. Uh, maybe you don't even have to do that. Mm, so this is a string size. Mm -mm -mm -mm. String of sets. Um, so we need to take these two things and turn them into uh, into some sort of procedure. Maybe. I actually don't think so. I actually don't think so. Mm -mm -mm -mm. All right, let's give it a try. So what I need to do, I need to iterate through the arguments in argv. Uh, right. So, but we have to probably do that in a reversed order, right? So we have to do that in a reversed. Uh, so when we push them on the stack, they are reversed. <sighs> oh boy. So uh, let's take this thing. So uh, this is how we add this thing to a memory. So string size uh, and n, if I remember correctly, is the length of the string. So this is going to be the length. Uh, of n. Oh, and this one is interesting because uh, here it means that we also need to null terminate all of that. We also have to null terminate all of that. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Mm, so uh, let's give it a try. So this is going to be mem str size plus n. Uh, is going to be equal to uh, zero, right? So we equal to zero, but st str size is going to be plus one to take into account the null terminator. Um, and also that means that uh, on the stack we have to append uh, zero as the pointer of that thing. So, and then we also need to append the str size as the pointer of the current string. Uh, and after that, we have to append the amount of arguments in here. There we go. So I think this is how we prepare everything. So we iterate through the arguments, we push them into the string buffer, uh, and uh, then we just populate all of the necessary information on the stack. We also need to check uh, that uh, after all of that, we didn't overflow the string capacity, the string buffer capacity. Uh, so, all right, that looks like a code that would work. And let's try to simulate this entire thing. And it didn't work because we don't pass argv anywhere in here, you see? So that's kind of the problem. So let's do my pi uh, on the fourth. Um, my pi. Okay, so this thing has to be argv, uh, actually arg, 
uh, then uh, value it should be org uh, to, 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 to anything else incompatible types um, so you have to I suppose decode this stuff All right mm. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah so the value has to be encoded as UTF Eight. So let's keep it as a value, All right? So and the value is going to be arg in code as UTF-8, right? So that's what we're going to have in here. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And it's going to be the length in bytes, right? It's going to be length in bytes. Uh, anything else? My pie is actually super useful. Um, two, 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 two. Mm -mm. So maybe we can just set zero, right? I think that's what we need to do in here. Anything else missing? Uh, okay, that's cool. So when we do the compilation, we uh, pass the arguments when we try to run this entire thing. So uh, to, to do two, we just use argv. And I suppose that's precisely what we can do uh, in here, right? So we just put the rest of the arguments and uh, yep, so it compiles. And if I try to simulate, it kind of worked. Uh, so, but it didn't print all of the, oh, I know why. I freaking know why. Mm. Well, I didn't really know why. It's kind of strange. Mm, bar buzz. It missed the last one. Why did it miss the last one? I'm not kind of sure. But it kind of worked, as you can see, right, in the simulation, right? It kind of worked uh, in a compilation. Uh, yeah, so we actually had more of these things. Uh, Arg Vifu, Bar Buzz, and some other shit. Uh, but that was kind of, kind of strange, I, I don't really know. So it feels like we didn't put all of them, and the question is why? Uh, simulate, uh, where is this thing? So before we're gonna put all of them in there, let's actually try to print these arguments, right? Uh, print uh, like so, uh, and see if we got everything. Uh, yep, we've got everything, but the last one, I don't see the last one. Uh, why don't I see the last one? Why don't I see the last one? So I append zero. Then I reverse everything, then I iterate. Um, mm, 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 mm. Mm. Append str size. Here is the stack. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this is our buzz bar foo uh-huh buzz bar foo and in here i may want to take a look at the contents of this stack uh okay so we have a three uh oh 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 shit Oh shit! In a simulation, null pointer is a valid address in the memory. Here is the problem. Yes, because our memory is just a byte array and the pointer there actually starts from zero. So, yeah, a null zero is a valid address in here and one of the strings is actually have address zero. Fuck! <laughs> shit! Fuck! Shit! Damn! Um. So we have to offset maybe something or? Fuck me! So yeah, this is actually, uh, yeah. So for some platforms, uh, null in C might not necessarily be zero. I guess this is kind of the situation, right? Um. So, yeah, and here dereferencing the null pointer actually valid thing. God damn, bro. God damn. So, if I do plus one, right, so that means um, we can do something like uh, null uh, 
point uh, padding, right? So this is a null point of padding, uh, right? Um, uh, so just a little bit over padding at uh, the beginning, beginning of the memory, uh, memory to make zero an invalid address, right? Uh -huh. Um, something like this, right? Null pointer padding. Uh, so that means every time we're trying to access the, um, well, I mean, we can do it like that, I suppose, right? So, uh, yeah. So this is a null pointer padding, and it will kind of work. It will kind of work. Uh, uh, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, and there we go, it works. As you can see, it does full uh, bar buzz. Uh, but in the compilation mode, we also have the program name, right? We also have the program name. Do we have to have a program name in the simulation mode as well? Uh, I'm not kind of sure, right? Is it is it that useful? Is that a useful thing to have? Uh, so maybe um okay so let's remove this entire thing mm, maybe for tests too much yeah it could be could be actually point good point uh rye unis tv subscribed with twitch prime thank you so much for twitch prime subscription and welcome to our epic uh Porsche club all right so that's pretty cool um yeah it actually was very insightful, right? I never thought, right, about the environment where a zero could be a valid pointer and what implication it has. So it's actually pretty cool. I'm really glad that I didn't remove the simulation mode because as I work on simulation mode, I, like I'm actually learning more and more things because I'm trying to kind of simulate uh, x86, 64 and Linux and it just like gives me more insights into this entire stuff. I really like that. Uh, so, yeah, we'll need to match the uh, the outputs for tests. Uh, Myocat subscribed with tier one. Thank you, thank you so much for tier one subscription and welcome to our Epic Porth Club. How about it? How about it? Uh, so, mm -mm. all right, uh, let's -a go. Let's -a go. Mm -hmm. Uh, two, 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 two. So, but here's the problem. Uh, the first argument is never gonna match anyway, right? It's never gonna match anyway, and maybe this is something that we all always want to drop. We want to drop the program name because between the simulation and the compilation mode, it's gonna be different. So, and it doesn't really matter. So let's actually do drop, drop, uh, right? And if I try to do uh, the compilation thing, it only gonna print a full bar buzz, but now in the simulation, in the simulation it, do, it does bar buzz. So, uh, and one of the things we can do in here when we do a simulation mode, right? Simulation of, uh, sim simulate, uh, little engine, uh, I'm gonna do, Where's the file path, uh, program path? I can do something like this, um, uh, program path, right? So I'm embedding the program path to the arguments, right? And the program may use it if it wants to. Uh, all right, so in, if I do the simulation, there we go, it's a full bar buzz, and there is no difference between the compilation and the simulation mode, both of them print full bar buzz. It's pretty cool. Um, but here's an interesting thing. Now we have arguments for the test cases. Because before, uh, test cases didn't have any arguments and now they do have them. So how are we going to provide them? Um, so we'll have to extend our testing mechanism to have command line arguments, apparently. Um, so this one is going to be interesting. Uh, I'll need to think. Um, also, I want to see uh, how the path in the simulation looks like. Uh, so let's actually don't drop anything in here. And uh, we're going to do uh, a simulation. And there we go, here is the path, right? So we're using the path to the, uh, to the file itself as the command line argument. Okay. So that is fair enough. That is fair enough. But for here, uh, it's going to be drop drop. 
Mm-mm-mm-mm. All right. So uh, right now, what do we have? Uh, we have uh, for each individual test case, we have uh, a corresponding txt file, right? And the corresponding txt file basically describes uh, what is expected uh, exit code of the application, what is expected uh, standard output of the application, and what is the expected standard error. So maybe one of the things, uh, additional things that we're going to have in here is uh, command line arguments, right? So, but how we're going to describe command line arguments? That's a very good question. <laughs> um, so I have no idea actually. Um, though before we only considered this thing to be like an output and now in this entire thing we also include an input so it kind of complicates everything so i'll have to think about that hmm so yeah so i think i'm not going to introduce that right away um because i'll need to think how to implement this kind of stuff properly but uh we're gonna have tests for that uh, nonetheless um all right so arg v -porth. so i'm gonna put it into the tests um mm, 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 mm. so i'm just copy paste it uh and for now it's gonna be test by uh record mm -hmm. test by record and if we take a look so we introduced argv.txt but as you can see it has nothing because we didn't provide any arguments uh, so uh, what I'm gonna do is just commit that um, remove these things um, and this is gonna be essentially a to-do uh, come up with a way to test uh, command line arguments, right? Because right now our mechanism just does not support that. Uh, so now we're gonna have our V and there we go. So this is actually pretty cool. So uh, command line arguments are not undefined behavior anymore. And uh, we define it by implementing it in simulation mode, right? Simulation mode sort of becomes like a reference for what is expected from the environment. Everything that is not in the simulation is undefined behavior, essentially. Um, well, that basically means uh, like a lot of syscalls are undefined behavior because we don't support a lot of syscalls in the simulation mode, um, which is kind of like a different discussion completely. But yeah, it's kind of just something to think about, um, right? So implement uh, uh, command line args for um, for the simulation mode, for the simulation mode, uh, and I'm going to push that right into the repo. Okay, it's pretty cool. So we have command line arguments. How about that? Isn't that cool? I think it's pretty cool. So uh, I'll register for like two hours. So I think I'm going to wrap up. Does anyone have any questions before I? go technically it's defined behavior the program just crashes i guess yeah so crash is pretty well defined do we have a streaming schedule no i don't have it anymore uh, I found it very overwhelming to follow any streaming schedule uh, to the point that I burned myself really, really badly. So I don't have a streaming schedule, I'm sorry. What's next for Porth? Um, so next I want to implement a simple static checking for uh, input and output arguments of the uh, operations, right? So essentially just a simple check. If an operation takes two arguments and produces one, I want to just sort of meta simulate everything at compile time and make sure that stack doesn't underflow or overflow. Well, it's probably not going to overflow, but at least doesn't underflow and all of the arguments are consumed properly. Uh, so because that will catch a lot of errors that I do on a, you know, on a daily basis when I program in this language. So I want to uh, have a very simple static checking of input parameters. And then 
we may want to start working on uh, self-hosting because we have everything to do self-hosting. Uh, we can open and read files. We can write files. We support command line arguments. Uh, we have access to the memory. We're Turing complete. We can just go ahead and try start doing that. Uh, we're not going to make it self-hosted in a single stream, but at least we're going to uh, start that. Maybe we're going to implement a small subset of ports in ports that uh, supports like addition and subtraction or something like that right so we're going to start with a very small subset of ports in ports and then we're going to expand that subset until it fits perfectly uh, until it's full set and as soon as it's a full set we're going to uh, you know dump uh, python completely and it's going to be uh, purely ports uh, you know uh, code base uh, will the static checking require something like struct? I don't think so, because I'm not going to introduce a proper type system. I'm just going to check that, um, you know, the final size of the stack is uh, empty, right? So that's what I'm going to check. So basically everything is consumed, nothing underflows, and uh, yeah, something very, very simple, just to catch basic errors. Um... But will it be ports anymore? Well, P is going to be sort of like a reminder that initially it was in Python, but yeah, it's still going to be ports. Um, yeah. So we're going to uh, leave the P as the reminder. It's like a scar on the face of the language, right? That's what it is. Mm. Python leaves permanent scars on languages. Now we have command line arguments officially. Almost. No, now we have it officially. Uh, so, and let's delete this branch. There we go. All right, boys and girls, that's it for today. Thanks, everyone who's watching me right now. I really freaking appreciate that. Uh, thank you for all of the subscriptions, for all of the support. I especially appreciate that. Uh, have a good one, and I see you on the next stream or on the next video. Uh, so if you're watching that on Twitch Live, check out our uh, YouTube channel where we upload videos and the votes. This vote is going to be there as well. If you're watching on YouTube, check out twitch.tv slash and follow me there if you want to interact with me live and maybe even throw some money at me. But yeah, I gotta go. So maybe we should raid somebody. I don't know. We haven't raided anyone on Twitch. So is anyone streaming anything interesting on a science? Oh, it's not a science and technology section anymore. It's a uh, game development and software development, something, something lame. I don't know. I personally like science and technology because it sounded like I'm doing something, something cool. <laughs> Now I'm just doing lame software development and game development. Nothing, nothing particularly interesting. Um, so, yeah. What do we have? Uh, one lives left is actually streaming. So uh, let's raid him, I suppose. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. He's a game developer, as far as I know. And he's uh, using Jai, by the way. Right, so he's using Jai. Uh, so let me just see how to spell his nickname. Uh, Twitch is extremely slow. Holy fucking shit! I'm gonna pause the um, you know the the, the, the player. Uh, so one lives left. Okay, so let's do a raid. Uh, one lives uh, left. Right? Did I spell it correctly? All right. I it looks like I spell it correctly. Uh, so where is the thingy majingi? Okay, get ready for the uh, for the raid, boys and girls. Get ready for the raid, and I see you all next time. Love you. Mwah.